Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're seeing me for the first time, this channel is about me drawing, uh, describing the process, creating stuff, and talking. So for today's video, I decided to share how I get ready for drawing, what are my key elements to complete the artwork, and most importantly, how I get inspired. Before we dive into the main topic, what I usually do is, well, to be honest, I don't have any schedule or, or any kind of routine. Uh, I sometimes do get up and get ready and work on my desk, or sometimes I stay and draw in bed. The moment I start to draw, I turn on my iPad, immediately open Procreate and open the canvas named Candy. This canvas was named by my cousin when she was drawing on my iPad once. And I still use it because as you see, this canvas setting match my needs. It's important to check the canvas information because personally for me, it's crucial to ensure the high quality. After I sell the prints, I want to be sure that no matter how they want their wall painting to be, they have the option for that. Personally, I always prefer bigger prints and paintings, so I ensure to have it in highest quality possible. I start drawing with a sketch. Uh, first of all, I have to mention that most people think I use my client's pictures and trace them, like the scene is ready or something, no, which is not true. What I love most is that I create the scene. That's the most important part, how I see, how close can I get to the people I work with. To be honest, if it were a tracing job, I wouldn't do what I'm doing, because what I'm doing now is what I love. It's where my creativity flows and that's what makes me happy. I want to talk more about this topic, about drawing from your imagination. Uh, what are the benefits, how can we find inspirations and how to keep them. I dream my painting and then paint my dream. Drawing is one of the best ways to express yourself. Drawing helps to collect your thoughts. It can also be just a form of therapy. You don't always have to have a plan or a vision about what to draw. So sometimes you have to go with the flow. People can get inspired by many things like music, flashbacks, uh, films, books and any new emotions. We humans are, our mood depends on the situations and environment we are in. Georgian psychologist Dimitri Uznadze undertook a study focusing on behavior patterns. He posited that every behavior is guided by the mind and unfolds promptly. This implies that a living organism can perform actions aligned with its goals in a given environment. The mood itself operates at an unconscious level, comprising both subjective and objective elements. The subjective aspect pertains to an individual's needs and desires, while the objective component relates to the circumstances and surroundings that can fulfill those needs. I will link the sources in the description, so if you're interested for further information. So what I'm trying to say is that if you really get inspired or motivated, that means you are in the wrong environment. If you wish for something and there is no requirement, you cannot fulfill the act. I have had a uh, time uh, where I took the blank paper and uh, I wanted to draw something, but I felt it, I had a feeling that my hands were not mine. This happens when I don't know what I, what I feel and where is my mind. We sometimes feel that chaos, but even the chaos in ourselves, we should understand what it looks like, feels like or something. If we feel that chaos in ourselves and can't identify it, I think that chaos does not belong to us. The true inspirations come from within. And to feel comfortable and safe, we need the right environment to choose uh, that has a big influence on us. I rarely get inspired by people. In my humble opinion, influences uh, 
from people cannot be personal. If I can be inspired from other people's experiences, it can, it may not be constant and at some point I will still be lost. I think what you should do is to pay more attention to details, especially when you are in the nature. Imagine it's your first time on earth. The moment you feel you are the part of it, it hits different. We often forget what a beautiful place we live in because of the daily problems and the boring jobs. Some people think Earth revolves around them, which is kinda egocentric. We are part of this amazing journey and I think that's the biggest inspiration you can have. Unfortunately, I have not experienced uh, the wildlife, uh, seeing the wildlife in real life. But even in documentaries, um, I feel so alive, seeing all these animals and ecosystems. I remember when I was a kid, um, my parents bought me uh, books about uh, wildlife and also about prehistorical creatures and deep ocean living creatures. I remember my first impressions and how I never got bored about looking at these pictures and reading some information about these animals. I also remember I saw this anglerfish, I hope I'm spelling it right, in a book for the first time and I was so fascinated and looked at it for a long time straight. My dad also loved watching documentaries about animals and as a kid I loved how he explained the details he understood from the narrator. In the conclusion, if you really get inspired, that means you spend more time watching things on the surface, which leads to ending your day with an empty emotional chest. You barely remember what happened yesterday. Draw your favorite scenes from your life. Draw one of your favorite days you spend with your favorite person. Favorite days you spend in your special place. Take a closer look at where you are, who you are with. Appreciate their eyes, their hair. Appreciate those leaves falling on you, the wind itself. Appreciate the details. Appreciate the world itself, which you often forget and try to appreciate your regular days and try to not disconnect from your present self. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts in the comment sections. Hope to see you soon.